Okay, so the first ladder and the first single elim are over for MCS purposes. It's time for you guys to switch over to skill-based passing. After the intro, I'm gonna explain exactly why I think this is the biggest skill gap in competitive Madden. Let's get into it. What is up guys, Zane from Zane Madden YouTube channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the biggest skill gap in Madden 23. This is something that they brought in brand new to this game. This is a better concept. I think that they've done it a lot better this year. And as I've been thinking through the first couple weeks of Madden 23, I've been thinking, why is man coverage so sticky in this game? And I think that EA has really decided that the biggest skill gap in this game is gonna be using the skill-based passing. So in this video, I'm gonna to explain to you exactly what this is, how to use it and what all the settings mean, as well as some extra things that you absolutely need to think about So I want you guys to kick back, lock in with me. This is gonna be a really good video today. I hope that you guys are ready for this because this is really, I think, where the game is gonna be won and lost at the end of the day. So let's start off first and foremost with your settings. What do these mean? When we start off with the skill-based passing, I am a player that uses placement and accuracy. So there are three different passing types in this game. You have your traditional classic. This is what we have gotten used to over the years playing Madden. It disables the skill-based passing mechanic in favor of classic Madden passing. This is your traditional pass leads with the left stick, your left bumper for high ball, your left trigger for low ball modifier, and uh, really it just kind of dice rolls your outcome when you throw the football. Your ball placement is never ever gonna be as consistent with classic as it will be with the skill-based passing. For that reason and that reason primarily, that is why you use the skill-based passing. Now I know a lot of players out there have gotten, at least at the start of the year, into the mode of using classic for the first MCS event because they felt that the first, you know, seven to 10 days was not enough of a time frame to master this mechanic. But what you'll notice is that there were a lot of players in the MCS tournament that went far in the bracket, and that was because they had their skill base passing down. Now, I just think that we're kind of on the cusp of, you know, really unlocking the potential of this mechanic, and we're going to start to see some really demonic pass leads and uh, specific routes that you could never, ever throw with classic simply because you are using the skill base passing. Now, within the skill base passing uh, tree, there are two different types. You have placement. Uh, placement is going to, as it says, enable control over the placement of the pass within the target area, and it gives you a little bit of a finer control over the pass strength. However, the accuracy component of your outcome is a dice roll, similar to the way it is with the classic, right? You're going to put the ball where you want it, but there's still a chance that it might dice roll you a little bit inaccurate. That is why I am a user of placement and accuracy, and you should be as well. With placement and accuracy, it's gonna add in a meter that is gonna basically determine your accuracy. I mean, you're gonna start to see uh, green for good and blue for great, and that can help guarantee your outcomes. Now, I also think from a standpoint of ultimate team, we're gonna get to the point of the year where there's also gonna be some dead eyes that you might stack on your quarterback while using this that could take the accuracy component out of that. And maybe you could go ahead and go back to straight placement and not have to ever worry about it. So that's something we might talk about a little bit later in the year. Now, as far as passing slowdown goes, this is something that only applies when you're playing the AI. If you guys wanna slow it down so it gives you finer control over your ball placement against computer, by all means have at it. This is something that is not on online though, so do not use it. Um, so with the freeform reticle max distance, this is a question I get all the time, whether it be in the Gridiron Game Plans Discord, which by the way, if you guys are members of my strategy website, gridirongameplans.gg, we do have a Discord. You guys ought to be hopping in there. There's plenty of conversation going on daily. Lots of players helping each other out with schemes, whether it be the offense or defense, settings type things, um, ability setups, you name it, we have it in there, including our lab sessions, which will be starting up very, very soon for Gridiron members. So make sure you guys are taking advantage of our Gridiron Discord. It's included along with all the other content on the website for $9.95, so make sure that you guys are taking advantage of that. FAR is um, basically going to allow you uh, placement control um, of the reticle 
uh, beyond the range of near. Um, near obviously is going to kind of keep the ball relative to the receiver. Um, it's cool, but it's going to be mostly body throws. Um, I want to be able to freeform pass with this, and we'll get into exactly what freeform is here momentarily. There is one additional setting called no max distance. The benefit to no max distance is actually that you can throw the ball away uh, very, very easily without getting an intentional grounding penalty because you could literally just throw it to wherever you want. And you know, it can land on the turf incomplete. The game registers it as an intended pass for a receiver. So, um, you know, you can get away with intentional grounding, but I think you can also get away with it on far as well. So I use far just because it kind of caps uh, the really squirrely throws that really overlead it one way or the other. Um, but, you know, if you guys want a little bit more, go for it. No max distance. Freeform reticle speed. This is something that is going to be specific to your quarterback. We will get into that momentarily but this is something that will not be the same for everyone. Unlike the common Twitch questions that I get every single day on twitch.tv slash ZanMad, and I stream there Monday through Friday in the afternoon, make sure you guys go check it out, hit that follow button. This is not your playbook setup or your AP setup. This is going to be relative to your thumbs and your quarterback's release animation. I will say that again, this is not something that you should just copy from somebody because you saw them using it. This is something that ought to be a muscle memory for you and you can tune it as you get better with this or tune it back if you feel like you don't quite have a mastery of this. Um, this reticle speed, the higher the number, the faster the reticle goes, which conceivably means that you could lead the ball further away from the receiver. Whereas if you have this cranked all the way down, it's gonna go a lot slower, allowing you finer placement via a slower moving reticle. I will use mine in the middle. I'm around a 12, depends on what I'm feeling on any, any given day. Um, some days I'm really crisp, some days I'm not. I'll swing this around between probably 10 and 14, but most days I'm on 12. So 12 is where I'm at. Let's go ahead and get into what this particular mechanic does. So a lot of players think that when you are using this mechanic that you lose the ability to classic pass. I want to just let you know that that is not really the case, that the classic, as you guys might know it, is kind of inside of the freeform passing or the skill-based passing mechanic. Um, you only activate freeform by holding left trigger. So if I wanted to throw a traditional inside pass lead down the seam to Irv Smith Sr. here, I could just throw this ball right there. And you see that it basically throws a very similar pass lead to what a classic pass would. However, it's a little bit better. So just for what it's worth, I led that ball to a similar area as classic would, but it is a little bit more over the middle than you might expect. So I'm gonna show you an example here. This is where the ball goes on the inside pass lead with uh, the freeform passing set to placement and accuracy, but I'm not using the freeform aspect of skill-based passing. So. This is an inside pass lead, gets behind the hook defender. I lead him. You see that he catches it basically on the hash mark, right? So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna set this to classic. And I want you to just kind of see that we do have the ability within the skill-based passing mechanic to kind of use the classic. So I'm gonna respot the ball to make sure that that change takes effect. And I'm gonna show you the inside pass lead. So we're gonna step up and I'm gonna throw this ball. You're not gonna see a, a single reticle come up. And you see that, you know, it, it's a very, very similar ball, right? So, um, you know, again, based off of the meter, if you were to go back, I would like you to probably notice that I didn't roll a blue accuracy on that um, particular first pass. You like that? You like that? But my placement was still pretty forgiven because I was using the skill-based mechanic. Um, so uh, if we actually take a look again with uh, the, the two throws, um, with this one on classic, we actually caught the ball a little bit inside the hash. So um, with the classic, you know, we, we threw the ball to that spot with the placement and accuracy, but I rolled a green. Um, however, with this particular throw um, on classic, they threw it down the seam a little bit more to the inside. So um, there are gonna be throws that obviously if you use placement and accuracy and you're not perfect on your accuracy, it might be off by, you know, just a couple inches, but in that situation, the throws are very, very similar. So now we're back on placement and accuracy. I wanna show you what freeform passing is. So I'm actually not gonna throw this with any real intent um, here. I'm just gonna throw this to whoever. And what happens is when you use the freeform passing, you're actually gonna use the left trigger or L2 on PlayStation. And that's gonna bring up a, uh, a the reticle, 
So you see that I can lead the ball into a spot. I did that on purpose. I threw that ball basically just as far down the field as I could with an inside pass lead. And you see that the ball basically went to where I put the reticle. So I had more control. That was basically the same inside pass lead that I threw with classic and without the free form passing on placement and accuracy. But you see that I got a completely different ball placement. It actually led him and split the safeties. And I actually was just a little bit overthrown on that. Um, but like I said, I was kind of like just leading that hard up and in. Uh, kind of like I did on classic, but there's a big difference when you start to work the left trigger in because I actually got that ball a lot more depth down the field away from the safety. Um, and you also saw that it was really in a spot where the middle linebacker couldn't play that. Now, this is where it's going to be really, really great because right now the man coverage meta is very, very popular. So let's go ahead and show you what I mean about that. We're going to take the field here and I'm just going to run a little bit of cover zero press and uh, I'm just going to throw some free forms down the sideline. So I want you to take note of that last throw. I threw an incomplete pass, but it was a positive incomplete pass. I put this ball in only a spot where my wide receiver could get it and nobody else. If you were to try this same throw on classic, this would likely be a jump ball interception for the DB. But you see here that I led that over the shoulder of Adam Thielen. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look here. You see, I was able to throw a good over the shoulder fade against the inside leverage, and it was just out of reach. But that is exactly what we're looking at with this. Now, if you guys wanna know what I'm doing exactly here on this, uh, these are streaks against cover zero press, and we are free forming them up and outside. You guys will obviously have to get a little bit used to uh, the free form passing and the release that you guys use, because uh, depending on the quarterback release, you might get different uh, you know, different types of, of pass leads. But you see right there, this is a perfect throw up and outside shoulder that you cannot make on classic. Simply put, cannot make on classic. So I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna do the exact same thing here. And I'm gonna throw that ball with the same pass lead on classic uh, against this cover zero press. Now, everybody and their dog is running cover zero press right now. That is the top meta in the game. And this is a way to unlock throws that you otherwise could not make. So again, here you see, I'm just gonna to try to throw this up and outside. That was actually an under pressure. Let's just keep it rolling here. Um, and you're just gonna notice that again, this is not a throw that you can make um, on classic. You know, you're gonna end up being in dice roll scenarios uh, again here. Again, that's the same throw. And you see that like it, it doesn't end up in a spot where only I can play it. And also you may have noticed that it was kind of lofty in terms of uh, the throw. It didn't really come in at a trajectory that was uh, gonna give us a good potential to you know, rack it up the field. So um, very, very important that you guys pay attention to um, you know, this video and start labbing this because this is gonna give you a lot of different throws that you otherwise didn't really think you had in your arsenal. Um, so I'm gonna stick with this particular uh, throw, this, uh, this fade down the sideline or this streak down the sideline against cover zero press and um, you know we'll we'll try to get some good throws. Now over here on the far left, Justin Jefferson is getting super wins off the line. Um, so in a situation like this, you might see the inside the inside jam. You could actually throw this ball relative to the receiver. Now when you're looking at this particular uh, leverage, you, you can read the release and say, oh, okay, inside release against cover zero. You know you get this ball, you can get this ball to him early. You can get it to him late. But I mean, with freeform passing, you see what I'm attempting to do. I just left it over the outside a little bit too much. Um, we could get him with a, an instant catch over the middle looking upfield. So, you know, with this particular throw on classic, it's not really there. But in this, you see here, I could get this ball out into a spot where only he can catch it or it's incomplete. And if I put it in a spot where I can maybe even rack it up the field, this is gonna be a ball that could end up going to pay dirt. So as you can see, if you can learn to throw these balls down the field based on body positioning, you can start to put the ball in a spot on a simple streak that otherwise you could never do with classic passing. Again, this basically turned a, a streak route into what I would consider to be a very, very skinny post. Um, so you see right here, inside release against cover zero, that's a win for a wide receiver every time. And you wanna be able to lead him to his body. And on classic, this is not a pass lead that you could make. If you threw an inside hard pass lead on this on classic, this DB is gonna undercut it and pick it off. But with placement and accuracy and a good ball placement with your own 
user skill, this is going to open up your offense in a big way on a route that otherwise you would never throw in any other year of Madden or without you know some sort of aggressive catch. This is a, a simple open throw because we threw him open. And I want you guys to understand that. That is where this game is going to be won and lost. This man coverage is very, very sticky. Now, what I'm going to share with you guys in the next portion of the video is what you do not want to do when you are using this mechanic, at least in my opinion. So now we're here on the player management tab of the game, and I want to take a look at Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is certifiably the best quarterback in Madden Ultimate Team right now because a lot of players still like that slinger one. However, if you guys are using skill-based passing, I personally think he's not that great of a skill-based passer because his release is a slinger one. So when you take a look at slinger one, this is one of those releases that is so lightning quick that in order to use the skill-based passing, you have to crank up your reticle speed to a point where it feels incredibly, incredibly loose. So this would be a very, very high skill gap quarterback to use with skill-based passing. It almost seems counterintuitive to think that the best quarterback in football or one of the best two or three quarterbacks in football is a guy that is very, very hard to skill-based pass with, but because of the speed of his release, it makes it very, very hard to put the ball exactly where you want it to because you have to crank it all the way up. Another thing that you need to consider is that he has an ability in Gunslinger which speeds up that release. So if you were to take a look at him in an actual practice mode situation, he would actually have a faster release than a Slinger one because he's got an ability stacked on top of it. You compare that to his teammate in Jordan Love, he actually also has Slinger one. I'm gonna show you the difference between Slinger one with no abilities and Slinger one with Gunslinger to speed up the release speed and also a pass leading ability that gives you the velocity boost on top of that. So there's some big differences, not only just the release, but if you start to put you know, speed up abilities on the release and velocity abilities on the ball, it's gonna change a lot of factors that you are labbing when you're mastering this mechanic. So here we are in practice mode. I've got the Packers who don't have the best receiving core in the game by any stretch. But again, if you guys are labbing, you guys are gonna find out very, very easily how easy this is to master after maybe an hour, an hour or so. So let's go ahead and uh, call a little uh, cover zero here and I'll just place the ball. Now, we're actually gonna start off with Aaron Rodgers because he is um, a ability stacked quarterback, which is typically what players want in Madden Ultimate Team. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I think this is a year where I'm not gonna use too much other than maybe Fearless and some Deadeye abilities. I want traditional releases, no speed up. I want uh, no extra velocity boost because it changes trajectory. So um, you take a look right here, I'm gonna do this with Aaron Rodgers. And you're going to see that this ball comes in. Actually, that was a I whipped that in pretty well. But uh, the thing is about this, I put a lot of work into it, and I've actually lagged with Rodgers because he was my mutt quarterback to start. But because his release is so fast, it makes it very, very difficult to uh, control or get the ball exactly where you need it to be. So um, you see right here, it, it also with the velocity ability, that ball comes in low. If you were to compare that to say the Kirk Cousins clips, notice how that ball has more arc on it. If you guys remember last year in any videos, I talked about how I did not like generic three in Madden 22 because it was an arcier football. You actually want that arc when you guys are playing with freeform passing, at least in my opinion. So um, I'm actually staying away from the slinger family of releases because I feel like the ball comes out a little bit lower when um, the, the windups are faster. And then if you have velocity abilities on it, the windup is uh, also just the, the ball comes out flat, you know what I mean? So um, that allows more animations by the DBs, especially on some of these sideline throws where you're trying to throw a, a fade over the outside shoulder. But you can definitely tell here how Aaron Rodgers has a really, really fast release. I have to get the, the reticle to a, a spot pretty quickly. Um, and honestly, right now I'm also under pressure, but uh, you could definitely tell that it, it's a flat football compared to Kirk Cousins. and. Now we're gonna show you Jordan Love, who has the same release. So now we've got Jordan Love here. He also has Slinger 1. Um, and you're just gonna see here, again, as I try to throw this, um, well, we got screened at here. We'll just keep rolling here. You're gonna notice that it is a slower windup than Rogers with the Gunslinger, which is a bonus, but it's also still, it feels like I have less control. That was actually an okay ball right there. Not too bad, um, but, Again, I just think that really with some of the shorter windups in the game, you have less control over your reticle. 
um, you have to almost speed it up more to get it. And that was an, actually a great beat press win right there by uh, Watkins. But um, again, I've put a lot of work into this. I'm just telling you what I've felt, some of the trials and tribulations. So I'm probably making Slinger 1 look better than it feels tr uh, truly to me. When I was actually labbing Slinger 1, I kid you not, I had mindset all the way up to like 14, 15, 16 um, to, to just make sure that I could lead the ball further downfield. Um, I also think that if you guys are going to be using um, velocity abilities, you're probably going to have to turn your reticle speed up because that trajectory change um, with the ball coming in flatter, you're going to have to lead it downfield. So that way that flatter trajectory is thrown downfield more. So that way it, the DB can't jump up and swat it or, or intercept it. And because you have to crank those up so much, that makes it a lot tougher um, to, to get those throws in. But again, I, I put in, um, I would say thousands and thousands of reps into this as I played this. So I'm getting used to it. Um, and you guys will too over time, but I'm just telling you generic three is the best feeling for me. I feel like I'm throwing balls. Uh, when I make a mistake, they're not pickable due to the trajectory. Uh, when I make a mistake with slinger one, it feels like it, it swatted back over the middle, potentially intercepted. Um, just, less forgiving if you will so i'm gonna go ahead and leave it there this has been a little bit longer video but i know this is a banger i know you guys have been uh practicing this uh maybe a little bit on the side but maybe hesitant to fully commit to it i'm here to tell you right now fully commit to it and here's why i'm just showing you outside fades right now you can literally turn any route against any coverage in the game into a completion if you guys learn how to use this. There will be funky pass leads that you could have made in a million years with Classic. You guys are going to be able to um, unlock potential in routes that are quote unquote dead routes, uh, routes that don't really beat man or zone. You can change the depths of in-breaking patterns against zone to throw them more downfield so hook curls don't pick them. There's a, a million different things. And again, I did talk about throwing the ball away. Um, you see here, if I wanted to, you know, throw that ball away on far, there is a chance that um, it can, you know, be intercepted because it leaves it in play. But if you guys are really, really good at this and you guys want to get to a point where you feel like you can throw the ball away on any down and distance, throw no max on it and watch what happens. So I might have to throw one more rep here. But no, you see right there, there's the no max and it. I can throw that ball straight out of bounds. Nothing's open. I just throw the ball, hold a direction nowhere near where the DB is and let it rip. You won't get called for an intentional grounding. So I want to make sure that I threw that nugget in there for you guys. I hope you liked today's video. Make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. I know this was a good video. So if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or complaints, drop them below. Help the algorithm out. Help this uh, channel reach other Madden players just like you looking for Madden tips and tutorial content. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, this is Ann. Get in the lab and good luck.